Tutto nella familia de Jesu Cristo. It's Brother G, and I welcome y'all back to the Copper for Christ channel. This is where we take the light of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we shine it into a world that continues to get darker and darker. Tonight's message is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Uh, the Lord is so good, but before we get into it, we got to talk about our sponsors. Uh, first of all, this channel, this ministry is sponsored by the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is such a good God. He is such a good friend. He will always be there for you. Believe me, people, he will always be there for you. I've got an amazing testimony to share with y'all. But secondly, our second sponsor is Gaetano's New York Kitchen. Gaetano's New York Kitchen is my restaurant. It's part of how I fund this ministry because I don't e-bank people for money, and I never will. Um, and we have phenomenal food. We do catering. Uh, we're on uh, TikTok now. You can go to uh, Chef G, uh, Gaetano's underscore NY Kitchen. Watch some cooking videos on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook. We're on all of that. You can hit us up on our website, Gaetano's New York Kitchen, Inc., and uh, I'm, I'm really plugging the business tonight because I have a testimony. Because this message tonight is called The Moment in Time, okay? And I'm going to show you all that time is not linear. In fact, time happens all at the same time. Before we get into all of that, though, because this testimony has to deal with that. And I'm actually very grateful that this happened today. So let me tell you all what happened without further ado. An agent of Satan reached out to another agent of Satan and they tried to destroy and hurt my business, okay? Now, my business is how I feed my family. My business is how I make a living. My business is blessed because the food that we serve is prayed over and it blesses people. We pray that it will act as medicine to those who have infirmities. So do you think the devil is going to want us to succeed? Of course not. Being children of God, we know that automatically, you know, it's, it's going to be a fight. So let me tell you all what happened. So this agent of Satan came to the business today and tried to start some trouble. And they really can't do anything because my God is Jesus Christ. I am righteous in this situation. They are wrong, they are evil, and uh, they're not gonna succeed. They haven't succeeded, they have already failed. So what did I do after this situation? Well, first thing I did was I reached out to my father. I went hardcore into prayer. My wife was not home when she got home. We got together as a family with our son, and we prayed. <laughs> Heavy duty prayers, like when the Lord split the uh, Red Sea, and Pharaoh and the Egyptians got buried in it. All these agents of Satan got buried by the Lord, okay? Next thing I did was I reached out to some snipers, snipers in the spirit, a few good brothers that I know, and asked for some prayer on our behalf, because it's always good to have intercessory prayer. And you see, when the devil comes after a child of God, all you have to do is go to your father. Sometimes you might need to declare a fast. And uh, we're gonna see tonight in, in, in this message the power of fasting that men of God are called to do. Women of God as well. All children of God need to fast for certain things at certain times when led to. So, um, but what I wanna say also, the next thing I had to do, I had to reach out to an attorney and the Lord led me to a very good business attorney here in Atlanta and um, it turns out that the issue that Satan tried to attack me with is remedied very quickly with a simple permit that was an oversight and did not stop me <laughs> from building what was built already since 2021 when I officially opened and got incorporated so the devil lost. But see, the point is, the devil lost before he even sent his agents to attack my business. It happened in a moment in time 
before I even knew what was going to happen because this morning when I woke up, I was very troubled in the spirit. I had a dream because I knew I had a dream. I couldn't remember what it was, but I knew it wasn't good because I felt it in the spirit. About a week ago, my wife had a dream. And we could, neither one of us could interpret it at the time, but it was a premonition of this attack coming. So the Lord was, has been trying to show us, you see. But in a moment in time, it was already taken care of. All at the same time, the devil has already failed. And, uh, you know, when they try to come at you with worldly things, then, you know, we gotta, we gotta not react in a worldly way, but with the, with the permit fixes the problem and nobody can say nothing. So I just wanted to share that, you know, have faith in the Lord, be surrendered to him because we have to surrender to him and he will fight for us, okay? So anyway, let's get to the message tonight. It's called The Moment in Time and I'm gonna to prove to you all tonight how time, time is a construct that the Lord made after Adam sinned. Okay, when Adam named all the animals and all that stuff, there was no time. So who knows how long it really took to name every single creature on this earth because Adam did that. When he sinned, however, death came into the picture because Adam and Eve had glorified bodies. Something akin to how when angels visited Abraham and other men in, in the word, how they looked like men, but they had supernatural abilities, uh, similar to how when Jesus resurrected, um, he walked through walls, you know what I'm saying? That's something that was able to do, be done with glorified bodies. So time was created part of as a death clause and also to trap Satan as well. Satan is constrained by time. God is not. God created time, okay? So the construct of time is simply that. It's a creation of God used as a mechanism to trap Satan. And since the spirit of death came into this world, this perfect world that he created, it had to be a clock, had to start running. Okay, so that is that. Now in this, in this word, we are going to show how everything happened at the same time. And I keep saying that because it's so amazing to me. And when you all catch this and see this, it is going to bless you so much, I'm telling you. So we're going to talk about three events um, that have happened in the Word of God. But before we do that, I want to go and pray a little bit of Scripture as a prayer. I want to pray this. We're going to go to uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. You see how good God is? He is a good Father. So right now, Lord, we pray this prayer. Right now, Matthew chapter seven, verses seven and eight, we pray as a prayer that the hearers and listeners to this word, that they will receive it, Lord, that everything that, that the listeners seek, that they will find in their lives. And when they knock, that every door that you have opened, Lord, for them will open to them in the physical and in the spiritual realm. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. You know, sometimes you could do that with scripture. Just use the word of God as a prayer because it's the word of God. I mean, come on, man. You know, so here in this message, a moment in time, we're going to talk about three particular events. OK, now these events happen over thousands of years apart from each other. OK, um, but they all happen at the same time. The first one is going to deal with Moses. And just for context, Moses lived in about 1445 B.C., okay? Uh, the second one, so that's a long time. So that's 1445 years before Jesus walked as a man on this earth, okay? The second one is going to be Elijah, who walked 
Uh, the prophet Elijah walked from 870 B.C. to 845 B.C. Remember, B.C. counts downward. Um, so that was roughly eight, I'm sorry, that was roughly 600 years between Moses and Elijah, okay? 600 years. But these things happen at the same time. Now, Jesus, we could say, uh, he, when he walked this earth, could be before, about 4 B.C. to 33 A.D., okay? And then a great reset happened at the cross. Time got reset itself. Everything got reset. The monumental event of God giving his life for his creation willfully, a willful sacrifice of himself on the cross, reset time. Because there was a dominion that Satan had, okay? And it had to be reset, not only to bring salvation to everybody, but it also had, there was a spiritual law there that had to leave an opening for the second coming of Christ and also the millennial reign of Christ. And also after that, when the new heaven and the new earth will be. But that's really talk for another message and another time. But there, just know that there were spiritual things that happened. I mean, there are underlying things that people don't realize when Jesus died on the cross. I mean, the the veil of the temple was rent from it was ripped, destroyed from the top down to the bottom. That wouldn't naturally happen. The earthquakes that happened, the sun going dark, all these things. The earth literally trembled at the presence of, of the Son of God dying, okay? So we're going to talk about these events in this, in this walk, and we're going to show how time is not linear. It all happens at the same time. Prophecy, I've said this before, prophecy is cyclical because to us living in time, we're constrained by time, and that it constrains us from knowing Everything we have to play out what God has already made happen. Okay, um, I hope that makes sense to people. Now, another thing that I want to talk about on all three of these stories. So we're going to be talking about Moses. We're going to be talking about the prophet Elijah and the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Star of the Show, <laughs> the Star of the World. We're going to be talking about all three of these guys, and I hate to even call Jesus a guy, but we're going to talk about all three of these these men um, in this message. Now, um, fasting, all three of them had to do a 40-day fast. Moses actually ended up doing 80 days. If you really read the word carefully in Exodus, because God wrote the commandments on the tablets first. Moses coming down from the mountain in frustration and seeing what Aaron was doing with the ate this bull worship, the, 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 the golden calf that he created for the children of Israel, and Moses destroyed the tablets. He had to go on another fast and back up the mountain. Okay, so he had to do 80 days. But 40 days, there's something that happens in the spirit realm when a man of God is called to do a 40-day fast. Most people are not called ever in their lifetime to do that kind of fast. Some are, and the callings of their lives are monumental along the lines of uh, you know, prophets like Elijah, Moses, Moses, literally the people feared him so great. He had the power of God. When I say the power of God, God gave him so much authority. It's ridiculous. It even says in the word that the most high said to Moses, I will be your God and to your brother Aaron, you will be his God. To Moses, the Most High said that too. This was when Moses was trying to complain that he wasn't a good orator. He couldn't speak well. So God said, all right, well, you're going to be a God to your brother then. He could speak well. So uh, God has a sense of humor. He really does. But don't play with him. Don't play with him. And uh, don't take for granted his mercy either. Because he is very merciful. Okay, so... Let's get to this message. Let's stop. Well, one thing I want to say about fasting, though, too. Don't everybody, people try to start declaring 40-day fasts. Fasts. You don't need to, okay? Unless you are truly 
led by the Lord and called to do that. And don't try to just do it off the cuff. If you've only done like a week, that's the longest you've done, don't try it for 40 days, okay? I, I'm not ashamed to say the longest I've ever done is 21 days. And that's all I've been called to do was 21 days in one stretch. So, but even, even that's crazy for some people. But just know this, in the fast, it's very important because it breaks bonds, it breaks shackles. The demons that dwell in people's flesh, they get uneasy, they get loosed because they're not getting fed. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the food, they're not getting fed what they're usually getting because as a person is fasting, they're going through changes, they're going through different types of withdrawals and things, and things are getting broken off in the spirit realm that you have no idea of when you're fasting like that. It builds power up in the spirit realm. It, it makes things that God has called you to do have actual effect to move mountains, to be able to heal people, to be able to uh, be intercessory, to be able to actually think about a person, know what they need in the spirit as far as prayer, and they might not even get a hold of you, but you're praying for them. And then a week later, they'll tell you, yo, you won't believe what happened, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And you know the whole time it was your prayers, partially your prayers that were answered and that stood in the gap for that person to get through whatever situation that was. They didn't even tell you what it was, but because you're in the spirit, you're in tune with the Lord, you're able to sense these things. There's so much, the brain that God gave us is so much more than what the devil will let us know it is. Neuralink and all that crap they're doing, these computers that we use is nothing compared to the brain God gave you. I'm telling you, that's why they want to calcify, calcify everybody's pineal glands. Because that's a conduit right there to the spirit realm. We're not going to get off on all these things. Enough of me blabbing here. Let's get to the word and let me show to y'all through the word here what the heck it is that I'm talking about. So we're going to go to Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 25. We're going to have to do a little bit of reading here, but as the Lord leads, this is going to be very interesting, okay? So this is uh, when Moses was receiving the, let's just read it in Jesus' name. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. So God did all these things. He put Moses on eagles' wings and brought him to himself. Remember when he talked to him in the burning bush? Moses had just whacked the Egyptian and ran up out of Egypt. He had a great life in Egypt, but his people were in bondage and he had to run out, run away. And that's when God called him to himself. And that's after he just killed somebody. There's nothing you have done that God cannot forgive you for and has not called you to be something great. He has called you to be something great. Okay, I know I'm preaching to somebody here, okay. Verse 5, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Doesn't that sound a lot like what we hear in the book of Hebrews, what Jesus did for us, being our high priest, how we Followers of him are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people unto him. Isn't that amazing that we don't have to go through all these rituals anymore like the children of Israel did to get God's attention? We don't have to go to the highest mountaintop in an energy cave. Please watch that message, energy caves, where there are literally ley lines and geothermal things that happen on this earth. There's, there's Taurus fields, all kinds of things, magnetic, electromagnetic frequencies, all kinds of things that allow one to commune with God. However, all we need now is to speak to Him. 
<laughs> it's amazing. But we have to be right with him. We have to come to him and surrender to him. But he'll, he'll, he'll look out for you before you actually come to him. Okay, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. I think I read this. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. You see, this is a this is a, a, a dialogue here that's going on between God and Moses, and then Moses going to the people and telling them, and then them giving an answer back, and God and Moses going back to God with the word of the people. This was not an easy thing, so don't take for granted how easy it is for you to just call on the name of Jesus today. It was bought with his blood, it came with a very dire price. Okay, please don't forget that. Please don't forget that. Okay, and the Lord said unto Moses, verse 9, Lo, I come unto, okay, I read that. Verse 10, and, Mo, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people, sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people from Mount Sinai. See, there's a reason why there's the three there. This is another mystery here three is look father son and holy spirit god loves numbers he speaks in mathematics that i believe was the universal language at the tower of babel that the whole world spoke i mean mathematics does not lie it's amazing god speaks in numbers there's a message i did called taking three away from saturn saturn which we took back the number three the three six and nine that the occult loves we took these numbers back in Jesus Christ's name. That word will be up again at some point soon, Lord willing. Um, it, it goes into the teachings of the wicked ways to show the wicked ways of the Kabbalah and how to stay away from that stuff and that message. But let's talk about this message a moment in time here. Okay. And the Lord uh, said unto Moses, Go unto the people, sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So God's going to make a show to all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. Do you know why? Because they were unclean to God. They were sanctimoniously unclean. They had to sacrifice bulls for certain things. They had to sacrifice lambs for certain things. And it wasn't even just anybody that could sacrifice. The Levites had to do the sacrificing. The priests of the children of Israel, the Kohanim, the, the Levites had to do this for the people, for all different types of offerings and all different types of um, sacrifices for the Lord. So they couldn't go up the mountain. They would be killed. Just like when Jesus told Mary, do not touch me. After he resurrected, he told her, don't touch me yet. I have not yet ascended. Because her uncleanness would have messed a lot of stuff up if anybody would have touched him before he ascended. Okay, so we are here. Okay, it's okay. Thou, okay, verse 13. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man. It shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. So even the animals, if they were to come 
too far up the mountain, when Moses was communing with God, they would be killed. The Most High would kill them. It's not a, an act of evil. It's, it's, it's respect and fear in the highest degree. They're not worthy to literally be in his presence. They're not. None of us are. Only through the blood of Jesus that washes us are we worthy because the Father sees his Son in us. You see, it, it, it's an amazing thing. Let me get through the word here, though, because this, this message is awesome. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. Meaning, don't have any sex. Okay, because the occult has taken a nasty way of this. Uh, the term orgasm, the word orgasm, literally means a little death. Okay, when a man releases his seed, there's a lot of energy that gets uh, used, and a, a, a death of sorts happens to bring in life okay uh, so yeah the the men were commanded for three days not to not to touch their wives there was all kinds of things they had to do they had to ritualistically wash their clothes uh, verse 16 and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. Ooh. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. Do you know that today? Because Mount Sinai, where Moses was, is in Saudi Arabia. They have it gated off with a fence. People can't, today can't get too close to it. But you can see on top that the top of it was burnt. Only the top with this great fire. Just like how Sodom and Gomorrah it has been known of. There's a special type of brimstone there that's not found anywhere else in the world. Because the Most High brought it down when he destroyed these places. And the devil today wants to lie to you and hide the truth from you. Oh, it's so bad. But we're going we're gonna to break through these truths in Jesus' name in this, on, in, in this channel, on this ministry. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down a mount, upon Mount Sinai. On the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. So just to look upon God, they would die. Because their curiosity, I mean, they would want to see the Lord. You know, just like when the Most High told Moses at another time, um, you could see my back, but you can't see the whole of me. So hide yourself in the rock, in the cleft of the rock, and the Lord passed over Moses. That also has to do with this message, too. We're, we're, we're going to get there. Just be patient, brothers and sisters. Okay, verse 22. We're almost done here. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the Mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. So Moses alone with Aaron, not even the priests, not even the Levites were allowed to go up to this part of the mount. But we're not going to get through all of this here. Uh, if you go to uh, chapter 20, 
of Exodus, uh, in chapter 20, uh, there is, that's when he receives the Ten Commandments, if you want to also, you know, hear about that. But we're not going to get into that. So the, 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 the point to take away here is that in 1445 B.C., Moses is not face to face with God, but he's in the presence of God, a physical presence that descended upon the mount. And when Moses came down from the mountain, if you remember, his countenance was changed. They had to put a veil on his face because the glory of God shone upon him. People couldn't even look upon Moses when he first came down because the glory of God was upon him because he was face to face with God, face to face with him. Now, let's go to another prophet, the prophet Elisha in the first book of Kings. And we actually, before we do that, let's go to uh, Exodus 31, verse 18, uh, just to finish this bit up with Moses. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. This is what I was talking about in the beginning when the Most High literally wrote the Ten Commandments on the stones. Moses went down, saw the idolatry and wickedness the people were getting into, was disgusted by it, broke it, and he had to go back up. So that was that. But let's let's do go to uh, 1 Kings. I don't want to keep you long, brothers and sisters. 1 Kings chapter 19, we're going to read through verses 5 through 16. Now this is when, i got to explain just for context here. This is when, during the time of uh, King Ahab and uh, Queen Jezebel, um, Elijah had just killed 450 prophets of Baal in energy caves. Go back to that. Maybe on the card, I'll put it up there so y'all can check that out if you haven't already. It's a long message, well worth it to listen to and watch. Uh, okay, so uh, Elijah just called down fire from God on the sacrifice. 450 Baal priests, priests of Baal, couldn't call down anything. And because they couldn't, they were put to death afterwards. Now, after this, Queen Jezebel the witch went after Elijah to kill him. Just the fact, see, you got to realize these guys were men, okay? They had flaws, they had faults. Just like today, when the agent of Satan came to approach me, I have flaws and faults as a man. But I went to my father and he took care of the situation, okay? It doesn't take away the emotions and the feelings that a person has when they go through certain things. That's why we're not supposed to trust upon our own hearts, because it is deceitful above all else. That's why we're supposed to only trust on the Word of God because it is unwavering, it does not change, God does not change. Though our moods and temperaments might change at times, and we might feel different at times, we got to go to Him for everything because He will fight our battles for us. And He does. So when Elijah was running to this cave, basically, to get away from Jezebel, it didn't feel good to, you know, have to, whether they were uh, priests of Baal or not, 450 people killed is not a nice thing to have to see, okay, and, and be a part of. So that's the context of this. Elijah is running for his life, and at one point he actually wants to die, okay? So let's see what happens here in Elijah's cave. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 5 through 16, and thus says the Lord. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat an angel. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. When was the last time you woke up and an angel brought food and, and, and water to refresh you? 
maybe you can be that angel to a homeless person. Huh? That's, that's an idea, right? Okay, verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink. Now remember, I talked about the 40-day fast here. Because this is also shortly before uh, Elijah gets taken up by the Most High, because Elijah never died. The spirit of Elijah will be on one of the two witnesses. The other witness will be uh, the spirit of Enoch, because he's the only other man that never died. It is written for man to die once, then the judgment. Well, Elijah and Enoch never died. That's why they're going to die when the two witnesses are getting sidetracked. I already did a message about them. The two witnesses, there'll be testimony of two. That'll be up again at some point, Lord willing. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Now, I want to just say something here and interject here because this is very interesting. Moses also was at Horeb, Okay when he um, fled the, from persecution of killing the Egyptian and went to who would become his father-in-law, Jethro, that was by Horeb, by Mount Horeb, okay? So this is an energy cave where God likes to commune with his people. So Elijah had to do a 40-day fast on his journey to Mount Horeb. Moses was at Mount Horeb. It's an energy cave. Just pointing things out here. Okay, and he came unto he came to the, unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he asked, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? The word of the Lord came to him. Who's the word? Who's the word of the Lord? Isn't that Jesus? Hmm. The word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him. So the word is a masculine man here. The word. He came and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Hmm. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, the prophets of God, because Elijah was like the last real prophet of the Most High at this time. They were all killed. And all these creepy little Baal prophets had to get dealt with by the Most High. And Elijah's called down a fire from God. So God, so, so the word of God, say Jesus, uh, was speaking here unto Elijah. Interesting. Okay. Throw down thine altars. They threw down the altars. They slain your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. It broke the mountains in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Wait a minute. Was the Lord in Elijah the whole time? Huh? And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out. Another one having to wrap their face because of the glory of God that is shining upon them. This is amazing. Moses, when he came down from the mountain, his face was lit up. There's, there's pictures of him with horns and stuff like that, all kinds of weird things.
but he had to veil his face. Now Elijah had to cloak his face in the mantle, in his mantle. Hmm. Interesting stuff after the still small voice of God. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elisha? And he said, I have been very jealous for the God, Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. So now the Most High is giving Elijah a mission to anoint a new king of Syria. Doesn't the word of God tell us that he makes kings, he rises kings up, and he tears them down at his will? He also gave his prophets, as we see here, Elijah, the power to make kings. He's telling them to make the king of Assyria before he calls him home. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Sharphat, and Abel Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So look at that. He anoints, he gives Elijah charge to anoint Nimshi, Jehu, Jehu actually the son of Nimshi. Uh, this is not the same Jehu of King David's time. This is a different Jehu. I guess it was a popular name. Uh, so yeah, and this would be the Northern Kingdom. When we hear Israel, it would be the Northern Kingdom, and the Northern Kingdom was extremely wicked. That's why Ahab, because Ahab would have been finished by now, and uh, Jezebel got eaten by the dogs. Okay, so she gets eaten by the dogs and Elijah gets to see God. <laughs> it's a no-brainer for me. Okay, so let's just build here together real quick before we get to the uh, sort of grand finale of this. Okay, so we've got Moses in 1445 communing with God 600 years before Elijah. And we got Elijah meeting with the Most High in the cave. First, the word of the Lord came, well, before the word of the Lord came, two angels came to talk to him, to feed him, physically. Then he goes on this fast, and the word of the Lord, and the way that it is, it's not like the word of the Lord came unto me saying, no, 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 no. There, there is a pronoun there, a he pronoun, you like that? A masculine word, it's Jesus, came to him. A still, small voice. King David told us to be still. And, well, he didn't tell us that, but the Lord through him said this. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Okay? So we've got, and, and, and both of these guys went through 40-day fasts. They both had the shiny, I mean, I can just imagine what they actually look like to be irradiating all this glory from the Most High. Okay, we're building here now. We're going to go to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to go to uh, Luke chapter 9. Uh, this part is when Jesus was transfigured. Okay, uh, you can also go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 9 or the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 verses 2 through 9 to get uh, little variations of the same story here of, about what we were going about what we are going to read. Uh, however, I chose Luke because I just like the way that this one reads better uh, for, for these purposes. 
Okay, so here we go. This is when Jesus gets transfigured on the mount. Interesting. Moses is on a mountain. Elijah is in a cave. And, but he had to go to Horeb, Mount Horeb. He had to trek there 40 days during his fast. Interesting. So they're actually all on mounts, going to mounts. These are energy caves, these mountains, okay? This is before Jesus came and switched the whole game up, okay? This is how one had to commune with God, a prophet. Okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, get right to it here. So Luke chapter 9, verses uh, 29 through 36, and thus says the Lord, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Moses and Elijah came to talk with Jesus on the mount. One of these guys is from 14, 1445 years before Jesus. The other one was uh, 800 and some years before Jesus, but they both came at the same time to talk with God on the mount. Did you catch it? There is no such thing as linear timelines. It all happens at once. When Moses was on Mount Sinai, communing with God, receiving the law and the commandments is the same time when he appeared to Jesus here and Jesus was transfigured because Jesus is God. The same time that Elijah was in that cave getting nurtured up, strengthened up with food by the angels, then told by the Word of God, the masculine He, Word of God, Jesus, to get up and go to Mount Horeb, was the same time that Jesus was transfigured in front of Peter and his other disciples that were with him. It all happened at the same time. And Jesus did this in... Well, it was still considered the B.C., but it would actually be like uh, between 31 and 33 A.D., wouldn't it? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. We're going to read this out, though, here, because this is just absolutely amazing. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I'm going to start it again. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Yes, I said Moses and Elijah. Thousands of years before Jesus, 1400 years Moses, and Moses was 600 years before Elijah, and Elijah was 800 and some years before Jesus. Yes, it all happened at the same time. Elijah and Moses talked with God. <laughs> Who was Jesus on the mount? Same time. Time is immaterial. Who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should soon, well, it doesn't say soon, but which would speak of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Hmm. So they actually spoke of what Jesus was about to encounter. But Peter, oh, Peter, and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. So not only did they see the glory of God now, the Most High shining on Jesus, they saw these two guys standing with him. Jesus is in white, pure white raiment now, just like the saints will be when they go before the throne of God, before the battle of Armageddon, when they ride out with the Most High, with, with, with Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, Mm, this is kind of crazy, man. This is kind of crazy. Okay. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, 
It is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. So look, Peter was so shook, he didn't know what to say. <laughs> he follows Jesus up this mountain, falls asleep like he did, because it's, it is a spirit. It's a spirit of slumber. Uh, you know, the devil always has to do what he does to try to mess things up. But thank God that they woke up and they were able to witness this. And here's the Son of God communing with Moses and with Elijah, plain as day. And the part of business Jesus had to talk to them about was what he had to do soon at the Passover at, um, in Jerusalem. Moses was part of the first Passover. You know, he was there when the Most High commanded them to put the blood on the lintels on the doorposts so that the angel of death would pass by, would pass over them, the, the children of Israel, and only kill the firstborn of the Egyptians. Because that was the straw that broke the camel's back, which made Pharaoh say, okay, y'all can go. And then what did he do? He went to chase the land anyway. So it's just, it's just crazy. It is just absolutely amazing. This, this is just amazing. But Peter was shook. He didn't know what to say. Make three tabernacles. Like, I mean, that, that, it's amazing. Uh, we'll do a message about the tabernacle at some point too. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. Who entered into the cloud? Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. My God, what an amazing God we serve. So as Jesus was transfigured and met with Moses and Elijah simultaneously, Moses was receiving the law and the Ten Commandments and Elijah was receiving the strength and the comfort from God to deal with what he just dealt with. Because he was about to be received up to heaven and God had to give Elijah two kings to make. The king of Syria and Jehu, the new king of Israel. Because Ahab and Jezebel, yeah, they were finished. Okay? So yes, Moses and Elijah met with Jesus, who is God. And it all happened at the same time. I just find that to be amazing. And you can't tell me you've thought of that. Like that is just insanely beautiful. It really is. And I'm glad I was able to share my little testimony on how the devil tried to hurt my business, but the Lord had already taken care of it. And it will be taken care of. It has been. It is, and it will be taken care of. So start to look at things, brothers and sisters, in a past tense, a present tense, and a future tense. Okay? Because they call the present, it's called the present because it's a gift. Okay? Don't take for granted the present that you are in, but know that it it's all happened before, it's happening now, and it will happen. So know who you are in the Lord, because you were saved in Him before the foundations of this earth. You were chosen by Him. You've lived the life that you've lived. You came to the Lord when you came to Him, or maybe you haven't come to Him yet. But if you were given to him by the Father, because Jesus said, no one can pluck those who you have given me, Father, out of my hand. So make sure you're in the Lord's hands. You know, this is reminding me, I got to get all my old messages out, Christ's hands. That's another beauty. All right. I pray that this message blessed y'all. I love y'all. Please stay in the Lord. Study to show yourselves approved. Spend time with God. 
He's your best friend. He is your source for everything. There is no problem too big or too great for him because he created everything. Okay? He created everything. And uh, reach out if you need anything. Everything will be up on the, on the thing there. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. God bless you all.